I had the privilege to listen to Ray Dalio speak a couple of months ago at the Abu Dhabi Finance Week. He always has these gauges to look at changes in the economy or the market. Last Friday, he posted an article titled, Are We in a Market Bubble? And there, he showed us his bubble gauge to see if the current market is in a bubble or not. In, in that article, there was a chart showing the top seven companies in the United States, the Magnificent Seven, ranking them from cheapest to most overvalued. And we can see on this list that Google, according to him, is the cheapest one, followed by Meta, and the most expensive one is Tesla. To understand this chart, we first need to understand what Red Radio means by a bubble. Everyone has a different definition of what constitutes a bubble. According to Ray Dalio, there are six points, six items that we need to look at when there is a bubble. And a bubble is when a combination of these six are happening at the same time. Number one is high prices relative to traditional measures of value. And he uses the example of discounted cash flows. Let's say you're discounting cash flows at a certain rate today. And usually most stocks you're discounting is overvalued. This is one sign that we may be in a bubble. Number two, unsustainable conditions. For example, if a company is growing earnings by 25% a year, that doesn't mean that it will keep happening. At some point, earning growth is going to slow down. This is something natural. It happens to every businesses. Third point is many new and naive investors are in the market. Usually retail investors are not that active. Maybe they are investing for their retirement but when we see retail investors watching youtube videos a lot not my channel on the people's channel or posting on reddit about investing on twitter that's when you know that maybe we are in a market bubble number four is that there is a broad bullish sentiment everyone thinks that we are in the best of times and that stocks are just going to go up number five is a high percentage of investments are being financed by debt that's what we call leverage that's why we call mortgages you take a second mortgage on your house and you're investing so this may be a sign that we are in a bubble and number six is a lot of forward and speculative purchases and here it's more specific about companies they have increased their capital expenditures usually this happens in commodity companies when there is a bull market let's say oil everyone is going to invest in oil so those companies increase their capital expenditures and then there is an oversupply and the market crashes According to Ray Dalio, if there is a combination of these six spots, then probably we are in a bubble. I somewhat agree with his definition of a bubble and especially because it takes into consideration retail investors. That is not just about prices, it's also the action, the psychology of retail investors. And based on these six items, according to Ray Dalio, we are not in a market bubble. But the magnificent seven stocks are somewhat frothy. So frothy means a, a little bubbly, but not really in a bubble. Things are getting overvalued, but we cannot really call it a bubble. Okay, we need to see if this gauge really works. And it has worked in the past. It was able to predict the dot-com bubble. It was able to predict even the crash that happened in 2022 because the market got overvalued and really there was a crash that followed. But it failed to predict the crash in 2008. So it is not always accurate. You can look at it, you can use it, but of course it is nearly impossible to predict when the market is going to burst. And maybe like Julita.com bubble, we were in a bubble for a long time. So you missed most of the gains if you were waiting on the sideline. Coming back now to the Magnificent Seven. Are they really how Redalio sees them? According to Redalio, the Magnificent Seven is in a frothy market. And I suggest you go through the article, you look at all the different six items he talks about. I posted a summary of that article with my own views on the Super Investors Club. There you can find everything in more details. On the Super Investors Club, you have different courses. You can learn if you are completely new to investing, investing for beginners. You also have one course that goes through financial statements and how to read them. For example, what is amortization? You know what is amortization. There are 150 lectures like this explaining all these terms and how to eventually calculate the intrinsic value of a company. This is a club where you can also communicate. There's also the mobile app. You can chat with other value investors and there is a special launch price. If you're interested, you'll have the link in the description and somewhat up there. We'll start with port number six and then we are going to move with port number one, but looking at the Magnificent Seven. For port number six, that is companies investing 
in future growth, spend spending a lot of money. And here, looking at the Magnificent 7, we can see that Nvidia, even Meta, they're investing a lot in the future. I would say that this is a bubble because they are the most innovative companies in the world. When we look at Meta, investing in the Metaverse, in AI, in AR, VR, so these are good investments. When Walmart was trying to create a store in the Metaverse, this is stupid. This is not a good investment. This is not a good use of your money. But what Meta is doing, I believe that this is a good investment. It's one of the most innovative companies in the world. Point number five, and looking specifically at the businesses, they are not using a lot of leverage. Meta only recently started taking debt. Apple has so much cash on its portfolio. All these companies have good balance sheet, most of them, and none of them are near bankruptcy. For number three and number four, it's not really applicable to looking at the Magnificent 7, so we can skip that. Number two, here he compared Nvidia with Cisco. You will see that the stock price gains look about the same. But once again, if you're thinking about AI being the future and how much money Nvidia is making today, maybe it can be inevitable, maybe at some point it is going to crash, but 10 years from now, it's still going to be making great business. The growth in AI is really here. It was not the case with the dot-com bubble. Companies were trading at 100 times earnings. This is not really the case with Nvidia. So even though the stock prices have taken the same trajectory, that doesn't mean that it is going to be the same. And finally, coming to number one, this famous chart. I somewhat agree to what Ray Dalio said. Looking at Google, it is undervalued. Looking at Meta, it is undervalued. And I will agree that the Tesla is the most overvalued one. However, we should understand something. And Ridalio mentions this, that is outside his circle of competence. He looked at these companies based on his gauge. Maybe he discounted cash flow, I don't know which method he used. As a financial investor, it's more in my circle of competence. When I look at these companies, I somewhat agree with his ranking. But that doesn't mean I'm going to invest in these companies. Even Google today, it is fairly valued according to me, but you always need to take a margin of safety because you don't know what is going to happen next. And you also need to look at alternatives. It's not just these seven stocks. There are other stocks in the market. Maybe there are stocks that are more undervalued. There is a margin of safety. The potential reward is bigger compared to these ones. But definitely, if the stock price of Google keeps crashing, I will be interested to make an investment because it is quite a safe company. Even with all the things happening with their latest AI, still Google is a good business for the long term. The business is still going to be here. Same for Apple, same for Meta. And this is exactly what I did with Meta two years ago. I invested in the company when everyone was selling it. And today I already more than doubled my money on Meta and I'm still holding. But that doesn't mean I'm going to buy more because there is no margin of safety on Meta. And I'm not going to say that Meta is in a bubble because it is investing really in growth. I can see the growth potential. It is useful capital expenditures. The multiples are not that high if you're thinking about the growth. They are buying back shares, they have a good balance sheet and now they are even paying a dividend. These are all positive things about Meta. I'm very bullish on the company. That's why it's the largest position in my portfolio. But that doesn't mean I will add more to my position today. Two weeks ago, I made my own video about whether the market was in a bubble or not. I would recommend you watch it. Have a nice day and goodbye.